for being here. We welcome you, whether you're here in the sanctuary or online. This is such a great place to be. I missed you. <laughs> it's good to be home. I love the front of our bulletin. Grace United Methodist Church, it's amazing. It truly is. So thank you. I want to highlight a few announcements. Uh, we have a bake sale fundraiser coming up. It's in your bulletin. It is going to help our church uh, ministry. It will support the ministry here at Grace Church. It is on Friday, May 11th from 9 to who knows when. Um, whenever we run out of baked goods to sell, that's when we will close it down. The other thing that I want to highlight is the ways that you can serve here at church. On the back, you'll find a listing of all of the different ministries. Jill, this is falling down. <laughs> there we go. I think I have it up. Hold on. Okay. <laughs> uh, and on the back, you'll find a description of each of the opportunities to serve and who makes out the schedule for all of these different opportunities. So please take a look at that. Um, and I think that's about it. The prayer card is on the back of your bulletin, so you can take a look at who in our congregation is seeking prayers. Now I invite you to please stand for the ringing of the bell. <laughs> And then, because it's a top 10 weather day here, according to WCCO Radio, that means we all ought to get an iota of exercise. So what we're going to have you all do in our worship space is sit down <laughs> so that you can watch the kiddos come up, and then we're going to bring you up again so that you can sing on your own.
my friends, now you can all rise and join us in our remaining opening praise songs. <coughs>
to exalt you, to lift up your name, and to worship your holy name. Thank you that all of you have given us and for all that you have done for us. And we come here with grateful hearts this morning, Lord. Grateful for the coming of spring, for the warmth, and for the new growth that this season is bringing forth. And today, God, we also come with concerns, with fears, and with worry. Help us to lay those all down, Lord, at your feet this morning, this very moment, so that we can make room in our hearts and in our minds for you, O oh God. Fill us up with your love and with your gratitude. God, we pray for those in our community, in our state, and in our world who woke up this morning, God, with no food, no shelter, no family, no love, and no hope. Lord, we pray that somehow and somewhere, through somebody, your light would break through and would give those folks hope also. Hope that you can be seen, that you can be heard, and that your light can shine through in even the toughest situations. Lord, we pray for those who have asked for special prayer, family and friends of grace, Katie Hubrin, Terry Thompson, Berkeley Damhoff and Larry Schultz, Paul Larson and Nathaniel Crow, Gary Herzberg and Kevin Elwood, Carolyn Diedrich and Dan Schwant. Lord, this morning we pray for those folks who are in our military and for our veterans, Tom Gray and Lucas Holtz, Nate Burr and William Nichols. And as always, Lord, we pray when we hear the sirens. We pray for Dusty Bellcamp and Dean Herzberg, Mike Chemish and Brad Melhop, John Colzer, Robert O'Fallon and Russell O'Fallon, Dan McClure and Alex Herzberg, Brittany Austin and Callie Smith, Trevor Wright, Jeremiah Johnson, Christine Story, and Jeremiah Schultz. And now, Lord, we take moments to lift up our silent prayers. Heavenly Father, we take all those prayers, those that we have lifted aloud and those that we have lifted up silently, and we wrap them all up into the prayer that your Father taught us to pray over 2,000 years ago that we still pray today. Please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. All right, would my children come forward, or those who are young at heart, for our children's message? Good morning, guys. We got a crew up here today. Nice. Moses parted the water so I can part the children. <laughs> All right. So we are doing. Hey, Ben. We are doing a study of the uh, special prayer. 
Now, it's a prayer that we pray almost every Sunday, and it's probably a prayer that you guys pray at home, too. Anybody know what prayer we've been studying? <coughs> yep. The Lord's Prayer. Absolutely. And why do we study the Lord's Prayer? Any idea why we study that prayer? Mm -hmm. That is the prayer that Jesus said in the Bible that we should pray. A matter of fact, he says, pray like this. So we're thinking if Jesus says pray like this, that's probably something that we should pay attention to and pray like this. So I'm going to have David put a piece of the prayer up there on the screen for us. Today we're going to look at this part of the prayer. You guys want to read that together with me? Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hmm. I don't know how to make earth look like heaven, so we're going to take this apart a little bit. What do you guys think heaven looks like? When somebody says heaven, what do you think of? Dead people. You think of dead people. Okay. <laughs> yes. There probably are people that right now are not living in heaven. Good idea. What else do we think about? We think it's beautiful. We think of a kingdom. Pardon? Clouds, we think of clouds. Golden gates. It's bright. That sounds like a pretty beautiful heaven to me, doesn't it? All right, so we're going to compare that to earth. What does earth look like? Mm -hmm. Pardon? It's colorful, yeah. Bless you. Anybody see any golden gates down here on earth? No, I don't either. Nope, I, and sometimes it's not even very bright, is it? Nope. So sometimes heaven feels a lot different than earth, doesn't it? But we're called to be in both. And we're called to close the gap between heaven and earth. So if you think about trying to make earth more like heaven, what kinds of things can we be doing while we're on earth to make it look more like heaven? Any thoughts? Mm -hmm. We could pick up trash, because my gosh, it's all over the place now, isn't it? Now that the snow's gone? That's a great way we can be ecologically correct. <laughs> Anything else we can do to make heaven look more like, or make earth look more like heaven? Mm-hmm. We could build some golden gates, yeah. Could do that. What can we do with each other while we're hanging out down here? We could be kind to each other. Could we say nice words to each other? Yeah. Bella, did I hear we could be nice? Mm -hmm. What else do you think Jesus would want us to do while we're on earth to make it look more like heaven? What did you guys do this morning, some of you up here? You played the bells, you played music. And Jesus and God and the Holy Spirit, they love music. Sometimes when I think about them being in heaven and us being right here, I think about them kind of boogieing to our music. Can you see God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit dancing? I can. Yeah. So there are many ways that we can make earth look more like heaven. And that's exactly what Jesus asked us to do. So let's look at that line again. David, can you bring that one up for me again? So it says, thy kingdom, God's kingdom, will be done, and he wants it done on earth, just like it is in heaven. So we got a job to do while we're down here. All right? So let's pray about that job. Can we fold our hands and pray? <laughs> Heavenly Father, we are so grateful today that it is a beautiful day that we have the ability to go out and pick up trash if we choose to or to do other things, other acts of kindness, to help make this earth look more like your kingdom of heaven. So we thank you for that, and we ask you to direct our footsteps today to help us make that happen. Amen. Thanks, you guys. You can head back to your seats.
our Father. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts this morning be pleasing to you, O oh God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So once again, good morning, friends and family of Grace Church, those who are in our worship space and those who are joining us online. Uh, we are in a sermon series where we are studying the Lord's Prayer. And that is the prayer that Jesus taught his followers, men and women, disciples, over 2,000 years ago to pray. And we still pray that prayer today. And you heard us talking during the children's message why we do that. Because it was the prayer that Jesus said, pray like this. Pray like this. So last week, uh, we're going to do a little brush up here. We worked together to really understand and appreciate the first phrase of the Lord's Prayer. And that phrase was, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed or holy be your name. So were we reminded of the word our? Our Father, the Father that we all share, the Father of all the people on this planet, the God of all people, my God, your God, and everybody's God, regardless of what our belief system is, regardless of our ethnicity, regardless of our financial or social position, and we even treaded very lightly last week on even the God of people who are politically affiliated differently than us. Same God, same Father. So next, we tried to wrap our heads around heaven, and we were trying to think about, so where does God actually live? And we landed on the idea that God is absolutely everywhere. Everywhere we live and everywhere that we breathe. We landed on the fact that God is as close as the air that we breathe. And then we studied the first petition of the actual prayer. The part that says, hallowed be thy name. And we talked about the fact that the word hallowed is just a fancy word for holy. So God asks us to do holy work through God. And then we also talked about the word Father. Mm -hmm. And we talked about the difference between our Heavenly Father and perhaps many of our earthly fathers. We're all called children of God. No one is an orphan and no one is left behind. So that is our Father who art in heaven. So that brings us current to what we're going to talk about today, which is thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So many people don't realize that this petition or this particular request is actually the central message of Jesus' entire ministry. His teaching, his life, his training, he trained all of us to think about the Lord's Prayer in this way, to think about less of ourselves and more about others. So this is what it means to recognize that God is God and I am not. Anybody ever have a challenge with that besides me? God is God and I am not. So we're submitting to God's kingdom actually here, God's rules and the rules of Jesus Christ our Savior. So the part about thy kingdom come, thy will be done, well, that's a lot of ah, thys, and of course that's old English grammar, but we still use it today. So we're training our hearts and our minds to think less about ourselves, to think less about what we want and what we need, and to think more about who else God has placed in our past, and to think more about them. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. So here it's really helpful to remember when we're thinking about the kingdom of God. And that starts way in the back of the Bible, at the very front end in Genesis 1, where we read the story about where creation began. And we read there, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. So he created the entire cosmos. The entire cosmos is God's handiwork. So consequently, the creator of the cosmos, the universe, 
actually falls under God's <coughs> reign, God's power and God's will. So now some people wonder, hmm, why do we need to pray for God's kingdom to come here? Isn't it already here? Why do we pray for God's kingdom to come here and for God's will to be done here? Well, despite the fact that God is the ruler of the cosmos, which we just talked about, us humans, you and me, we continue to follow Adam and Eve's lead. Because way back in the book of Genesis, we learned that they were drawn by Satan into sin and into temptation where they didn't keep God's will. So there's like this conflict that goes on. So the Apostle Paul writes in Romans chapter 7, and in my study Bible, it's entitled Inner Conflict, Inner Conflict. And this is the same inner conflict that people throughout history, and even us today, still wrestle with. So we're going to listen here to how the Apostle Paul describes that inner conflict that goes on. So as you listen to the scripture being read, I'd like you to think about how you fit into that story. Our first reading for this morning is Romans chapter 7, verse 14 through 25. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am of the flesh, sold into slavery under sin. I do not understand my own actions. For I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. Now if I do what I do not want, I agree that the law is good. But in fact, it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells within me. For I know that the good does not dwell within me, that is, in my flesh. For the desire to do the good lies close at hand, but not the ability. For I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I do. Now if I do what I do not want, it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells within me. So I find it to be a law that when I want to do what is good, evil lies close at hand. For I delight in the law of God in my inmost self, but I see in my members another law at war with the law of my mind, making me captive to the law of sin that dwells in my members. Wretched person that I am, who will rescue me from this body of death? Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then, with my mind, I am enslaved to the law of God, but with my flesh, I am enslaved to the law of sin. So you see, the struggle was going on then, and we still struggle with it today. And that's why the Lord's Prayer is so important that when we come to this part of the prayer, that we really just take a moment to meditate on it, to just think about it. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. So Jesus not only came to announce God's heavenly kingdom, that it was near, but Jesus literally represents the kingdom. Literally represents the kingdom. And if we think about Jesus' work on earth, what did he do? Well, he healed the sick, he forgave sinners, he fed the hungry, and he raised people from the dead. So in doing this, Jesus was giving us a glimpse of what heaven on earth could actually look like. But you know, sometimes us Christians, me included, we get really fixated on how we get people up to heaven. How do we get them up there? But Jesus focused more on how do we unleash heaven on earth down here? How do we close the gap and bring the two together? So every person who chooses to follow Jesus begins to live in the kingdom of heaven. 
even as we live simultaneously or at the same time right here on Earth, the place that we call planet Earth. And we live in both spaces. Now that's really hard for us to get our human brains wrapped around. We actually become citizens of both kingdoms, heaven and on Earth. So let's hear how the Apostle Luke tries to describe this for us. The second reading this morning is Luke chapter 17, verse 20 through 21. Once Jesus was asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God was coming, and he answered, the kingdom of God is not coming with things that can be observed, nor will they say, look, here it is, or there it is, for in fact, the kingdom of God is among you. Here ends these morning's readings. The kingdom of God is already among you. You see, the kingdom comes in ways that can't be seen by non-believers. But once we become believers and become part of the kingdom of God, giving our lives to God, that's when the kingdom starts to work through our own lives. We're praying in part saying, here I am, God, use me. And those of you who know the book of Isaiah knows exactly where that comes from. Use me. And now we're going to spend just a few minutes in conclusion on another part of this theory that's really hard to get our heads wrapped around. And it's how we have to take God out of the box that oftentimes we put him in. And many of you may have heard the phrase, it's the already and not yet. So what does that mean? So we wrestle with that idea of already, but not yet. So we are living in the already because the kingdom of God is already among us. So that's the already part. And we're living in the not yet. And the not yet is because we're still waiting for Jesus to come back and live amongst us again. So it's the already here, but the not yet there. So as Christians, and again you heard it about it during the kids' message, our job is to close the gap. Close the gap between the earth here, what it looks like, and what it's supposed to look like. And this is what we're praying when we're praying in the Lord's Prayer, doing God's will and living his prayer. It involves closing the gap between the already and the not yet, between the here and the bit later, on earth as it is in heaven. So by now I suspect you're beginning to see that the Lord's Prayer is more than just a prayer. It's like it's a vision. It's like a call to action. It's like a roadmap of character and faith. And each of us has a part to play in that role or in that play in God's kingdom. And it's up to you and I to identify what is our role. And my role may be different than yours and your role may be different than yours. It doesn't matter particularly what our role is. What matters is that we all pick up a part of that role. That way we can help identify and live out what it means to be a believer of Jesus Christ. And together as the church, look around for a moment. This is the church. Just take a minute. Check out the church. Yep, we are the church. We play a significant role in trying to close that gap. In all the spaces and in the places that God calls us out to be. That, my friends is the already and not yet. That is, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. Please sit back and be ministered to by the choir who's going to sing Father of Light. And I'd like you to pay particular attention to the introduction to this particular song.
Father of Light was written in memory of Jonathan White, a teenager who lived with chronic clinical depression and eventually took his own life. The day after Jonathan's death, his family found his journal and his Bible, both of which demonstrated the depth of his faith and the difficulty of his struggle. It was clear that he had turned to the Psalms often, and he had marked several verses in Psalm 56 in particular. Many in our midst today are in difficult circumstances and experience hopelessness similar to what Jonathan felt. It is our prayer that this anthem will give voice to the hope and assurance that God offers through the words of Psalm 56 and that through it, many will find the strength to cry out to the Father of Light, confident that he will hear and answer. Praise to the 
is your financial giving that allows church to happen here. It is your financial giving that allows us to do all the ministries inside these church walls and equally as importantly outside of these church walls. So please give extravagantly. We thank you ahead of time. You can give through the plate offering. You can scan the QR code in your bulletin or you can go to PainesvilleGrace.org and you can give there. Once again, thank you for your giving.
You can stay in that area, spill out in here or other places in the church to continue your conversations. Uh, remember to thank all the musicians and our AV folks up in the uh, AV spot for all the work that they do to make this church happen because it has been a fabulous worship service this morning. Anybody agree? Yeah. yeah. So please accept this blessing on how you can help close the gap between heaven and earth. May you have wisdom in the seasons of chaos. May you have strength in the seasons of difficulty. May you have joy in the seasons of sadness. May you have peace in the seasons of conflict. And may your light shine brightly in the seasons of darkness. May God bless you among the season that we live in, that through you, the world can see a glimpse of heaven on earth. Amen. Have a fabulous Amen. week.